you, uh, Dr. Shea. Uh, Salam alaikum, uh, everyone. Uh, hello out to everyone attending here today. I feel deeply thankful to see you gathered here to honor my father's memory. I know that for many of you, he was a valued uh, colleague, co-worker, mentor, teacher, and friend. And <clears throat> I can't speak on his scientific and medical achievements because I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't as involved with that as, as you uh, people were. What I can speak of is his unique and warm character and his, uh, and it's what I always remember about him because that made him a loving and wonderful and always present father. I will say that my father rarely had an easy road in life. You know, I certainly never had to suffer what he had to suffer throughout his life because I don't even think I could imagine it. He came from a humble family that uh, had to leave, uh, you know, Palestine after the Nakba, and he was born a year after it. They, they went from, uh, you know, they sought refuge in Lebanon, then Syria, then finally Kuwait. And that did not burn away their spirit. They, despite all this, they were very resilient souls, and his father, my, my grandfather being an educated man himself, instilled in them and the love for education and the need to have that so that you can have a more pleasant life. In this environment, my father thrived. He went to medical school and eventually became uh, a pediatrician in Kuwait. Then his first major uh, setback, other than obviously his, uh, you know, social <laughs> upbringing prior to that, came up, came up. He had kidney failure at around the age of 28, 29. He doesn't like, he didn't like to talk about it because he doesn't like to talk about what brought him down. He, he liked to talk about what he achieved and how others can follow in his footsteps. But I, I feel I need to say about it, to talk about it because he underwent his first kidney transplant prior to my, my birth. And even though this, you know, <clears throat> his workplace could have easily excused him for that and, you know, uh, and for not having enough sort of energy to continue with his clinical, uh, <clears throat> you know, work, he, he <clears throat> took that opportunity to, to bring up the, the possibility for, uh, him being involved in this new uh, initiative of genetic research. And <clears throat> certainly he took this to, to, the, to new heights. He, you know, it, it, at a time when, the, when it wasn't, when it wasn't thought of as a real field, he, he continued his, his education as Dr. Sheikh has, uh, you know, detailed. And he, he became a foremost, uh, you know, <clears throat> expert in this morphology and genetic medicine, especially, but not limited to the, the genetic diseases of uh, the Arab po population. Of course, <clears throat> we as his family knew that he, ha he had a, a, a talent for it, pro you know, that it turned out, to, you know, came, came forth because of, his, because of his artistic eye that could see malformations and abnormalities in a patient where others might have missed it. He was always an, an artist at heart and this, this helped him. He, he had a love for language, certainly more so Arabic than English, but just a love for language that made, you know, that helped him in describing and, and bringing light to light certain uh, conditions, and you know this was reflected in his uh, in his many many papers. In fact, our fa our family would joke that he used these talents to diagnose my mother's cooking, and <laughs> what you know what ingredients to put in it. And he 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 did that in many you know <laughs> circumstances. Growing up in my father's ha house. I always knew that my father was a well-respected man, and I came to understand that he had earned this respect, at least in part, because of his innate sincerity. He was genuine and loving, 
and he always let those around him know it. With us, his children, he never shied away from any issue, big or small, um, and, and he gave us a, a, the needed attention for that. He was always present in our lives, despite his always busy schedule. I knew that I, uh, I could come to him about any dilemma, about any problem, and the bigger it was, the more calm he was. And, and that, you know, that at, at times actually bothered me, because if, if I came to him, something small like, oh, I don't like this course, he'd say, just suck it up and do it. But if it was something a little bit more life-altering, he would sit down and he was the calmest person in the room. And that was, that was something that I really looked, uh, you know, looked up to. And I saw that, those same behaviors in his, uh, you know, in his uh, teaching, and, you know, when I was uh, fortunate enough to have to, uh, to, to sit in in one of his lectures, and, and with his relationships with his co uh, co-workers. Outside work, he was instantly likable as well, and he was quick to make friends, despite the fact that we often found ourselves moving from place to place after the Gulf War. Um, he had a booming voice, and he was a large figure, and he loved conversation. And he loved people, and judging by how often my father's house was filled and bustling and, and you know, noisy, they loved him too. And I, and I can see that here too, uh, tonight as well, today. Important, more importantly, my father never allowed himself, himself to make anyone feel inadequate or less than him, no matter how, uh, no matter what their social standing was and what their education, educational background was either. My father used that same inviting manner to put patients at ease. I also was fortunate enough uh, in several circumstances to, to have witnessed him in, in his clinical persona. Uh, you know, for example, I, I had gone with him, the first time I had gone to the Palestinian areas was uh, with him you know, in, a, in a voluntary trip that he had, he had gone in 1999, 1999. And to see him talking with these men and, and women the, that had no education, ha, ha, knew nothing but their immediate surroundings and the, uh, you know, the tyranny, the, the, the oppression they were feeling, and still be able to, talk, to communicate with them and make them feel at ease, that was a true inspiration. Of course, uh, us being displaced by, uh, uh, you know, by the Gulf War w was a challenge. But because of all these uh, characteristics, he he was able to climb the highest, uh, you know, the highest mountains as far as uh, you know his medical <coughs> and academic career. He went he went from you know almost nothing. Oh, despite having won the, the uh, Kuwait Prize the, the year prior, to fellow to full professor in, in, in you know, amazingly few years. And it's because of uh, his, his work ethic. Of course, since my father's troubles would not end there, he experienced another kidney uh, failure in the mid-90s. And, and while he waited for a transplant, he would drive every day, almost every day, from, from work uh, during lunchtime, you know, perform, uh, you know, very tiring uh, diocese on himself for many months, and then he would drive back so that, uh, so that his work was not compromised. And, and many of his colleagues would not know about this. He, he would not, he was, you know, he was too, proud of his accomplishments to let them know. And after getting a transplant, a second transplant, and, and having been hospitalized for a few weeks afterwards, his, his co-workers were amazed to see, they were stunned at, at how he had managed the whole time prior to this. But my father, it should be known, never quits, never quit, and never allowed himself the luxury to say, that's enough, I did it, I did enough, and certainly he did. But 
In that, he will, again, he will always be something I look, for, uh, look up to. Even when cancer struck him and threatened to take his voice and, in, in, and left him with a speech impediment and threatened to take his eloquence with words, he stood strong and battled and returned to work because he was finally at, at this point in his life where he, where he can, and he's in a, an Arab Muslim country, fostering better medical knowledge and understanding and, and you know, bringing forth all these programs that he, he helped with. And he was not going to abandon that dream. Of course, this was the Ill illness that would take his life. But I know that it didn't take his dream. I see the results of his life's work every day, and I see the appreciation that uh, that that is felt by that 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 would you know that is a result of that here and uh, everywhere uh, where you know everywhere that that academic uh, you know work is appreciated, and I know that he made a difference. I know that I'll, I'll be for, forever be touched by it, and I appreciate you honoring his memory today. Thank you.